2012, I sat for my first post CTME exam at the Delta State University. Guess what? I applied for medicine and surgery with a jam score of 182. As you may have guessed, I failed the post CTME woefully. In 2013, I applied again to Desu. I failed the post CTME. Then in 2016, I applied to UI. In 2017, I applied to River City University. Then finally, in 2018, I applied to University of Nigeria, where I finally got admission to the College of Medicine. My story differs from what you've seen on this platform because people will tell you they got 300 and above in their third jam, uh, which got them admission to the University of Ibadan, to the University of Lagos, you know, to study law, to study medicine and surgery, to study pharmacy, uh, etc. My story is different because I failed jam multiple times, like plenty times. Now, over the years, I've been able to identify the mistakes I made, and to this day, I still see a lot of students making this mistake. It is the reason why I'm making this video so that you will never make these mistakes. Now, if you are new to this channel, make sure you click on the subscribe button and like this video. Now, the number one mistake students make is applying for competitive courses with low jam score. Like I said earlier, I applied for medicine and surgery at the Delta State University in 2012 with a jam score of 182. You know, back then, you needed about 250 and above to secure admission for medicine. And today, the story is different because now you even need about 300 and above. I still see a lot of students who apply for very competitive courses with low jam score. It is a very serious mistake you can make because it will lead to your admission denial. The number one secret of gaining admission is actually applying for a course that aligns with your jam score. Avoid competitive courses if your jam score is low. Then if you have a very okay jam score, then you can go for your course. So let's say for example, you want to study nursing at the University of Nigeria and you get 250 in your jam. Your chances are already slim because 250 is not a good jam score. Does it mean you can't get nursing sciences with 250? The answer is no. In my next point, I'm going to talk how you can get your dream course even with a low jam score. Now let's get back to this point. Your jam score must always align with the course you want to study. For one, two, three, four times I wrote jam, I kept on applying for those courses with a low jam score. In 2012, if I had applied for, let's say, biochemistry with my 182, I would have definitely gotten admission. The goal here is for you to first of all gain admission. Gaining admission is in two steps. Number one is your jam score. Number two is your post CTME. If you have a low jam score, even if you get a high post CTME score, it will still reduce your chances of gaining admission. That is just how the system, the system works. That is why it's always advisable you go for a course that is suitable for your jam score. If you're not sure if your jam score can get you the course you want to study, let me know in the comments. Tell me your jam score, tell me the school you're applying to and the course in question. I'll give you the best advice. The next point is choosing the wrong institution. The school you apply to for admission plays a huge role in guaranteeing your chances. Going to a highly competitive school will decrease your chances. Now, I know a lot of you want to apply to federal universities. You want to, you want to go to UniMed, you want to go to OAU, you want to go to UniBen, you want to go to these schools you know, with big names. Now, let me tell you one thing about these federal universities. There's really nothing special about them. The only thing is, they have prestige, they've been existing for a very long time, they have a large alumni base and a lot of people feel if you attend these federal universities, it makes you a more superior student. But then that is not true because a graduate of University of Nigeria and a graduate of Lasso is actually the same thing. In fact, there are some state universities that are way better, way managed in terms of infrastructure than some of these federal universities. I want you to remove that mindset that oh, if it's not a federal university, if it's not UNN, if it's not a Buzari, I'm not going to attend school. No, that is not true. When your jam score is low, make sure you avoid these most sought after institutions. Now, earlier I said 250 cannot get you nursing science at the University of Nigeria because the University of Nigeria is a federal university. It's very competitive. But then there are a lot of state universities that 250 will comfortably give you your nursing science. You get the point. There are some 
state universities that 270, 280, 290 will get you medicine and surgery, but you can't apply to OAU with 270 for medicine and surgery, you will not get the admission. When you even get your jam score, even though your jam score is relatively high, but then the course you are applying to is competitive, the best thing to do is to switch to a state university or a federal university that is not as competitive. I don't want you to waste your jam score. So make sure you apply to a school that you will stand a very good chance. That's why I said, if you are not sure, if you have any doubt, I'm going to be brutally honest to you. Let me know your jam score, the school you are applying to and the course you want to study in the comments. I'll give you the best advice. The number three mistake is lack of exam preparation. Lack of exam preparation, including the post CTME, would lead to failure or low aggregate score. You need to prepare adequately for your exam to pass with flying colors. Now, when I was sitting for my post CTME exams, I was just, you know, I was just like a desica about my studies. I wasn't too serious. Like, I did not really take a lot of things into cognizance because it just felt like a another exam after all i've been doing well in my secondary school but then this post ctme is an exam that is going to determine your future if you get a high score you get a high aggregate score which would make you end up getting admission for the course you are applying to study for ctme is not just any exam you need to actually prepare for it now the question is how do you really do well in this post ctme exam number one is you need to know the syllabus for this post CTME. This is one mistake I kept on making over and over again. Even with my jam exams, I did not really prepare with the syllabus. You see, this syllabus is supposed to be a guide to tell you this is what you need to know. Now, I'm very aware that it's not all universities or polytechnic that conduct post CTME. So if your school of choice does not conduct post CTME exam, then there's no problem. There's no problem because probably they are going to use your O level results. Now, that should not tell you that you need a good O level results, whatever course you are studying. Then, if your school of choice conducts post CTME, you need to actually prepare for this exam. Another thing you must do is to know the structure or exam format. There are universities that conduct aptitude tests like DELSU, Uniport, RSU, etc., and even Unilag. Then there are some schools that conduct post CTME based on your jam subject combination. You need to know this format. It's not on the day of your post CTME exam you sit in front of the computer, then you start seeing current affairs and you'll be like, what? What's happening here? No, you shouldn't be taken by surprise. You should already know the format for the school you're applying to. But if I'm sure you don't know this information, uh, you can let me know the school you're applying to and I will give you uh, the exam format. Uh, yes, I will give you the exam format. Now, moving on is for you to really prepare for this post CTM, make sure you draft out a study timetable, study every day. Don't just like relent. This is the last phase, like this is the last race for you to gain your admission. So make sure you complete this and make sure you prepare very adequately for your exam. Do not be like me who felt like about any other exam, go, you go, go, you understand? I kept on writing jam. So make sure you take your post CTME very, very serious. Another mistake I also made was cramming post CTME past questions. You know, I just talked about how you should prepare for your post CTME. Where back in those days, what I do is that when I get a past question, I will just be cramming the answer. I will read it, read the question. Even though I don't know it, I will just like, okay, the answer is A. The next time I'll try to make sure that the answer is A. It is the worst way you can prepare for your post CTME. Because I don't actually know the reason why the answer is A. And then as I came to writing post CTME over the years, over the years, over the years, I will discover that when I go for this post CTME, because of the pressure, everything, all those answers I have cramped. It will just be flying from my head. Even if I see the same question on that exam day, there will still be a lot of confusion. So the best thing you need to do is don't cram post CTME past questions. The post CTME past question is there to help you as a guide to actually determine your level of preparation. So anytime you come across a question in the post CTME, you don't know the answer, you actually fail it. Maybe probably you, you answer A, then you look at the back, you see the answer is B. Don't just say the answer is B. 
actually find that, go to your textbook and read that particular topic so that next time you will not just guess or you will not just say it is B because you've seen before that it is B. No, because by the time you go back and read why it is B, it means that any questions they set around that particular area of interest or topic, you are able to answer it correctly because that question in the past question has helped you to widen your knowledge. It has broadened your knowledge on that topic. So don't make the mistake of trying to cram past question. It is the wrong approach. I made these mistakes over and over again. Now let's go into the next point, which is not considering alternative option. The problem is everybody wants to attend university. Everybody wants to get a BSc certificate. But sometimes in life, things don't really work out the way we want them to, you understand? Like when I was writing this jam exam over five years, uh, one thing I would have done is to have applied to a polytechnic at least. Because when you go to a polytechnic two years, you get your ND, then you can apply for, for direct entry. This point is actually for those that really have a low jam score. Universities are not the only tertiary institutions in Nigeria. There are polytechnics, college of education, school of nursing, college of health sciences. As a student seeking admission, you must consider these options if you don't meet the university cut of mark. I know it's your desire to study at university, but then if you end up with a low jam score, let's say below 160, then it is compulsory that you, you know, look at this alternative uh, uh, institution. After graduating from this institution, you can still further at the university. So I want you to actually, you know, put this into consideration, especially if your jam score is it, low. So I hope that this video has been able to give you insights on you know, some of the mistakes you must avoid in order to secure admission to university. So if you need advice, you have further questions, you need clarifications, feel free to let me know in the comments and I'm going to answer you as soon as possible. Make sure you like this video and subscribe to this channel. I am rooting for you because it's my desire, it's my prayer that this year you will gain admission. That is the reason why I'm putting this video together to make sure I give you the best guidance, like you get the best advice, you know, on this your journey.